a real treat because he's had such impact on the field in terms of rugby league, but it's the impact he has off the field that I'm most proud of uh, this young man. A little bit younger than me still anyway, so I think 40 is his age. Uh, he is the director of internal strength, uh, but in terms of rugby league, 200 games across the NRL and the Super League. He played in three grand finals, uh, winning two of them in the NRL with the Hair Bears and Benji Marshall in 2005. Uh, it was a big year for him in 2005, actually, because that year later on, he went on to beat the Australian team 24-0 in the Tri-Nations final. He played in the Challenge Cup final two over there with Huddersfield against Warrington. Unfortunately, didn't win this one. Uh, but Pauli Fatuera, uh, thank you for joining us, my man. Kia ora, Monty. I'm getting goosebumps. You're, 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 you're talking me up, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure to be on your show. It's, uh, yeah, important mahi that you're doing. And thank you once again for inviting me uh, to, to Kōrero and to hopefully... Hopefully help out our fellow uh, friends and family. Yeah, absolutely. I've no, doubt, I've no doubt that's going to happen, bro, because uh, it's been a wonderful career and your learnings during it and afterwards going to be great. But let's go back a little bit in terms of when we were all a little bit younger and you were younger. And I'm not going to ask you what type of kid you were because I'm going to tell you. Uh, this is from the, the your dad's mouth. He said you were fat, stubborn, and you had an attitude. That was until you came across Boxing Brother. Yes, I did have a bit of an attitude. Yeah, I, as, as all youngsters, we, we're trying to find our way in, in life. And when you're, when you're brought up with an older brother and, and, and siblings that dominate you, 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 you sort of tend to build up a, a bit of a rivalry with your, your siblings and, and, and be challenged a lot. So, yeah, no, I did have a bit of a, a temper. Uh, also, uh, you know, certain uh, things happened when you're young, unfortunate things, and you just got to, uh, yeah, go through those times. But your yeah, boxing was awesome for me, as I know you want to, you you're, you're a well-established boxer. Uh, I love boxing. I, I don't think I, I couldn't have been to the pinnacles as you, my friend, but boxing calmed the, the nerves. It challenged me. I love the I love the the mentality that you have to have as, as, a, as a boxer, and I definitely learned a lot of tools and values as a 10- to 12-year-old boxer that I, I implemented in my professional career as a mm. – uh, now has been rugby league player <laughs> mm, has been bloody you're a bloody good one but just just on that too because uh you were also said to be a daydreamer and i and i know what that's like because uh, i never did any schoolwork bro i i just dreamt about what the future could look like what i could do because when i was coming through it was sort of sort of establishing a, a rugby league path with, with the mm. zealand warriors uh a, a daydreamer but you left home at 17 years of age bro like my son's 15 to think that he's going to leave in two more years, I say, no way, no chance, shut the gate. Uh, so, you know, from this boy who was, you know, stubborn, had an attitude and, and, and was fat and uh, uh, got into boxing, uh, how did you come to a realisation that I had to leave the nest? Oh, it was in 1998, Monty. I played for the Wellington under-18s team. I was 16 years old. And Jason Wrigley, who is now the, the Panthers' junior manager, he, he made the Kiwis under-18s side and... And watching the team get picked and going up to the stage, I thought, man, I want to be up there next year. And and pretty much from from that point, I knew exactly what I want to achieve. And uh, Monty, as you know, mate, hard work works. I was never the the highlight rule player in my teams growing up. Uh, I, I just really dedicated myself at the age of sixteen to my craft, our craft of rugby league. And I stopped going to parties. I stopped hanging out with. Uh, excuse my language, dickheads, and I made those sacrifices early on. And as as my confidence grew, uh, as I trained harder, the confidence grew, and it, it showed on the field. And I was able to to make the under 18s Kiwi side the year later, and, and that really built the internal flame and confidence. And and I really wanted to make a difference in my life, Monty. You know, Wainui Omata is a small town. We have a lot of great athletes that come out of Wainui, Piri, Tana, Umanga. The great Johnny Lomax, uh, to name plenty more on the list, but there is also a long list of of well known athletes, uh, female and male, that didn't go through because they didn't have that commitment to their craft. And uh, before I move on, my father, who was uh, a, a well established rugby league player, played for the Railway Kingfishers at the at the highest level back in the Lion Red Cup days, Monty. So they came up to Auckland yeah. and played in the Lion Red Cup. And they lost five years in a row. But my dad gave me the advice to say, "Dad, son, I was never, a, a, I was a lazy trainer. Uh, I didn't train uh, hard, and I think I took that on board. Uh, although, you know, he shed, he shed me his, his, uh, his negative 
a mindset, which I said, well, if I want to make it, I better be a good trainer. And I really took that on board. And uh, yeah, hard work paid off, Monty. 17 years of age, bro. It must have been scary moving up to Auckland and, and doing that. Uh, I mean, were you a big family man? Uh, what what um, doubt did you have in your mind at that age? And, and you know, because it's um, a tough thing to do. It is. You're moving away from home from a small little town of 16,000 people, Wani or Mata, my, hood, my hometown, to the big smoke of Auckland. It was, it was, it was a, a, t- a tough time for me. Uh, spiritually, emotionally, and, and moving to the big smoke. I was very fortunate. I moved into uh, the Pirinara Fano, who, who took care of me, as you know. And and I had good mentors like yourself at the Warriors. And I found that year at the Warriors in 2000 was a big learning curve for me. I didn't say boo the whole year, mate. You know me, Monty. <laughs> I was quiet. I didn't say boo. I was, you know, looked, I was watching Monty Beatham on TV the year before and Stacey Jones and now I'm training with them. It, it uh, really came quickly. And that was a really good learning curve for me. Uh, but in my heart and in my soul, Monty, I always wanted to go to Australia mm-hmm. and, and, and try and prove it with, with the best uh, at that time. Now, mm-hmm. you know, Kiwis have a high contingent in the NRL, over 50% are Pacific Island and Māori, and, and that time's changing. But back in the early 2000s, uh, growing up and learning in Australia, especially with the Melbourne Storm, was was where what I was mm-hmm. focused and aiming to to grow. Interesting, bro, because you said you didn't say a lot, and which is true. You know, your actions speak louder than words. But, um, you know, looking back over it and seeing a, a bit of um, a quote uh, that you've had over the years, you thought that at that age of 19, when you were that quiet guy at the Warriors um, training alongside some of your idols, uh, you felt unworthy and that, you know, like if you weren't going to play first grade, you – you were self-sabotaging yourself in the way because you thought you couldn't even go home to Wainui or Mata. I mean, that's not the best mentality to have um, trying to make it uh, when you leave home. So uh, explain us that, that thought, man. Yeah, that's uh, well, well put, Monty. You, you, you hit the button there. Uh, uh, when when things don't go your way, like I had a really good uh, year. I, I never had made a Kiwi side. And then all of a sudden, I not only made the junior Kiwis, I got a first coach first grade contract with the Warriors. So things happened really quickly. I was going to one year college. And then a month later, I'm training first grade uh, football with, with yourself and, and some legends of the game. So it came really quickly. And that year uh, was a learning curve for me. And then traveling to Melbourne and being cut uh, by two NRL clubs at the age of 19, you're going to lose a little bit of self doubts. And, and, uh, but I look at that time as, as, uh, uh, teaching lessons, it was, it was. I don't know what it was. What do you call it? But it was, wow. it was challenges that we all face in life. And I had two choices at that time: was to move back to Wani or Mata and play uh, for the Premiership team, or or catch a tick, pay a t- for a ticket to move up to Queensland and play puck football, uh, but still maybe have the potential for another in our in our club to to sign me up. So I took option two. Uh, yeah, and you're right. I, 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 I didn't feel. I think this comes with a lot of athletes in all different sports. Monty, mm-hmm. as you know, we, we, we go through stages where our sport is our identity. Who are we without sport? And I definitely went through that at the beginning of my career, and and, and throughout. Uh, but I hung hung in there, and I was able to live next to Billy Slater and and Cameron Smith. Who were all part time footballers at that time, and. And uh, we, we, we kept each other in turn and trained hard and and things just happened. And that's when the, the Panthers were playing the Broncos in Brisbane and the CEO came and watched one of our games and offered me a contract yeah. uh, that week. So I signed it up and I was ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I want to go back to three clubs in three years from a young, impressionable lad that left home, firstly to Auckland, now went overseas. Um, no family, the the. The pressure of going, no, I'm not a failure. I don't want to do this. Um, for the people that might be in the situation now in terms of, um, uh, you know, bouncing from job to job or from business to business, uh, what what's some of the learnings or teachings you can give them in terms of, you know, keep your mind on the task, staying focused or or doing what you can to be successful? Because the next period after this, bro, you were very, very successful. Yeah. Yeah. It's we all go through challenges, Monty, and you, you you've got to have a genuine passion for for what you do every day. And I love rugby league. It was my passion as a young kid. 
you know, I really gave up, gave my all out effort and, and focus and made the right sacrifices. Even, even when people weren't watching uh, Monty, uh, I, I think you'd be wrong. I had a good time with my mates and, and had good, <laughs> not, good nights out and, and really I had, had a couple a of those time. with you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but in saying that, there was times there where I, I, I would, I would I would look after myself and, and make good choices and decisions. And and I know in Australia, Monty, you've got to be in the front. <laughs> if, if you're not in the front, whether it's fitness sessions or weight sessions, you're not going to get noticed. And I, I learned that very quickly. So uh, the harder I push myself at training, things just come more naturally in the game. Oh. Uh, and, and for me, Monty, I, I really just wanted to give my all. I didn't want to come home a failure. It, it was important to me that I made something out of my life and, and I was able to push myself to to that level uh, to get where I needed to get to and to, to get to those un uncomfortable stages. But then as you learn as an athlete that you to stay here, you've got to do it consistently. And like I said, I wasn't the the, 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 the highlight reel player. I played with the Benji Marshalls. I played with the Tony Puller Tours, but I did my job every day and I could do that consistently. And, and that's what got me through at the end. It's, it's funny you think you mentioned that because, you know, when you came as a 19-year-old, you didn't say boo to everyone. You went to a couple of clubs before you went to Penrith. Uh, and then we knew all knew who you were because you were that centre in the game before the grand final uh, with the hair bears that absolutely destroyed our Warriors' hopes and aspirations of going into the grand final the next day. You went on, uh, you, you beat the Roosters. It was an amazing Penrith side. Uh, if you think about what you were and who you were, but also what the team were like in, in that day in terms of uh, what it took to be, a, you know, a winning side and and to go to the grand final. Because just the year before, this uh, Panthers side came last in the competition. They got the wooden spoon. Yeah, that was I, – I, this is my fakoro, bro. If whoever won the game out of the Warriors and the Panthers, we were going to go and win the grand final. So that – really, that semi-finals that we played against each other was DGF – and it was a battle. And to be honest, you guys, yeah, you guys were a team that uh, caused a lot of havoc that year. It was just the way it goes, you know, sport. Uh, when I look back at that year, uh, that came from uh, a lot of hard work behind the scenes, a lot of work with camaraderie and and, and trusting each other. And and uh, as you mentioned, Joe Nullival, uh, Tony Pulatua, they really come out of their shell that year. They were devastating, and, and they were able to play with confidence. Uh, we had Kristen Campbell, who was uh, he was wow. magical, similar to Benji Marshall. And, and it, I think when you when you start to win consistently, it becomes a habit. And because Panthers didn't have success for a long, long time, the year before they were wooden spooners. Uh, when you taste that success, you want it uh, more. And we we're just very fortunate that we had a good coach who understood. And, and could relate to to the players. John Lang, he wasn't the, the most tactical coach, but he was he was caring, he was he, he was passionate, and and we fed off of that. And oh, it was just oh. free, you know, it takes a lot to win a grand final. You got to be injury free. You, things are got to go your way. And and luckily that year, the bounce of the ball went our way. Well, you won two grand finals in three years, bro, um, and I'm still proud of you this day for doing so. But in terms of what were some of the key components um, in the players in and around you or just the team as a whole and the ethos, uh, what do you think uh, were the two similarities between the 2003 Penrith side that beat the Roosters and then 2005 Benji Marshall flick pass team that beat the Cowboys? Because, you know, to some people never taste success and you've done it twice in three years. Yeah, and I, I've got to add to a year before those two premierships, I had no club. <laughs> I, I was playing park football, and uh, so when it came very quickly, I was very grateful, very humbled. Uh, the two similarities would be would be the the junior development coming through both clubs, and uh, the two coaches, Jong Lang and the great Tim Sheens, the, the caring factor, the the work uh, behind uh, behind you know twenty four seven workers, oh. you can always go to them for advice. Uh, they also wanted you to be uh, great footballers, but most importantly to become better men. And and I guess it's the com camaraderie and that trust and honesty amongst your players is important. Uh, what I loved about the the Tigers is that everything that we did, the wives were involved, the girlfriends were involved, it was a nice. family family thing and. 
the, the we all know how to play football. We've been playing it since the age of nine. It's the coaches that inspire you, mm-hmm. put it, inspire you, and, and, and get you get you to understand your job, and you go out there and execute your job. And and uh, yeah, great times came very quickly, and I'm very proud to be able to play against some awesome athletes like the Benji Marshall who just retired. I'm very proud of my brother. He's had an amazing career, and for him to tough it out, yeah, it's uh, yeah. yeah the, mm. Sometimes the uh, the dice rolls in your way, and I was very fortunate to play those two successful clubs. What what could we learn from, or what have you learned from someone like Benji Marshall? Um, you know, potentially an immortal one day. Uh, he's he's a great player, one of the real goats. He's played the most uh, games in NRL as a Kiwi. Uh, you know, got that premiership with you. Yeah, I know Benji is a couple of years younger than me, but in in a sense, I I, I did look up to him. He he, he was. He was, and we, we've got to remember too. He was the number one pin-up boy oh. for the for the game at the age of nineteen, and for him to have the confidence and the mana to uh, to number one, uh, put up with the media. Like in Sydney, it's crazy. Uh, rugby league's the number one game in town, and he was the pin-up boy. Everywhere you went, everyone wanted a piece of him. But not only that, but also to 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 similar to you, Monty, speaking up in front of TV. Uh, the footy show and, and being himself and then the next day next day going out to to do the business and also just seeing his work ethic uh, behind the scenes i also saw a lot of uh, personal development as it comes as we grow older we become fathers we have responsibilities he went from a single young man that everyone wanted a piece of him uh, wow. and, uh, to to now being a, a father of two uh, living good values looking after himself and and, and definitely has a lot of of uh, assets uh, in the game still even in retired like yourself monty so i'm very proud of him but more so his family is loyal very loyal and i'm very grateful to be a part of the inner sanctum 2005 was a mad year for yourself uh you know you won the the, the nrl premiership you went on to beat australia for the kiwis um you know uh, 24 nil what was it about that year for you in particular that you can look back on and and understand the process that made you the best version of yourself that you could share with us yeah, uh, number one, Blue McLennan, our, our coach. To be honest, I didn't know who he was. He was coaching domestic football at that time. I was playing in Australia, and once he got named coach, I wasn't quite sure who he was, but what, what Bluey uh, did really well is that he knew the game inside out. He was caring, and and he, he stamped his authority straight away by uh, choosing a, a really powerful leadership group in Rupert Wickies, Stacey Jones, Port Ohihi, and... Uh, and Nigel Wagner and we went on tour and the senior leadership team had a lot of input on us younger guys uh, and as as the tour progressed uh, we, we we gained a lot of confidence we beat Australia 24 nil baby yeah in the grand final so yeah it just come from uh, that camaraderie as you do when you go on tour it is You've been on plenty of tours, Monty. It, it can either be a win or a loss, but the main thing is you, you got to build that that team Fano unit, and and we we're able to do that. Mm. And it was good times, so yeah. Can you just before we move on to the next part of your life, uh, which is what I'm most proud of? I mean, I'm proud of you for that as well. But uh, in, in terms of uh, a couple of uh, great memories that you're most fond of um, playing rugby league. Uh, more so the the, the the memories and friendships that you make off the field. Don't get me wrong, I love winning. Uh, who doesn't love winning? And, well, and I, don't I, don't like, I don't know what it's like, Paulie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, mate. Uh, but uh, I, I enjoyed the, the competitiveness on the field, but more so the friendships that you, you've made off the field and been able to connect. You haven't seen a, a brother for 10, oh. 15 years, but you can still connect and, and, and go back to that those moments. So I think it's just the friendships that you make are the most important. And I think when you leave the game, it's more important to stay connected uh, to the game or your your former uh, teammates because uh, the, it's a big world out there. And when you when you play rugby league or other professional sports, you are caught up in a little little bubble. And, and it's it's important that we stay connected. Uh, Two thousand and nine, bro. Um, I, I don't know how I quite heard it, but when I heard it, I was like, wow, I was in disbelief, brother. Having met you as early on, um, seeing you be so successful on the field, 
um, understanding that the person you were and then hear that you got arrested uh, in 2009, you're actually being tased uh, for, you know, uh, teeing off on a couple of individuals. I was like, wow, uh, something had to happen. First of all, can we can we, can we we talk about that for a moment? Because if it hadn't have happened, bro, we wouldn't have gone down that track of you being this amazing man that has used that learning to help so many other people. Uh, 2009, the, the, the lead up to that, because you, you've said there was, um, you know, there's some psychosis, there was uh, uh, depression, there was anxiety, and there was addiction. Correct, Monty, and... Before I get into this, I want to make sure that my life's really good right now. It's amazing, I'm really brother. I'm, I've got a beautiful partner. We have a beautiful child, and our, our children are, are healthy, and I'm, I'm healthy. Uh, but you're right. Without without my my setbacks uh, and and my mental health issues, I would not be the man that I am today. So what happened in 2009 it was a bit of a roller coaster ride, Monty. Uh, uh, when you isolate yourself, loneliness becomes toxic. And I was going through some heavy mental health issues, but I wasn't quite sure what they were, Monty. Oh. Uh, when you when you in the, when you live in the rugby league world, uh, it is a very high demanding sport, and 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 sometimes when you're not feeling right, you still got to put on that persona that you're 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 okay. <laughs> now I'm all good. Uh, so although I was going through some difficult stages, uh, I still walked around like I was okay, and I wasn't. Uh, what triggered uh, my mental health breakdown was at the time my my uh, fiance ex wife now uh, she was hapu to our daughter and we were both uh, very happy and excited uh, but then becoming a father triggered memories of my childhood and, and things that I had never faced before. Uh, what those were, uh, Monty, and I'm sure a lot of people out there can unfortunately resonate with this is. Uh, I grew up in a lower socioeconomic uh, society. There was uh, certain substances that were around at that time that I saw at a young age that I should not have seen. And at the age of six, I was sexually assaulted by an older boy. I I didn't share that with anybody. I, I pretty much threw it in the closet and continued uh, with my life, really. But becoming a father in the UK in 2009 triggered these memories and... Uh, that was my uh, I what that was my downward spiral. Uh, Monty, six months of suffering from heavy uh, depression and and recycling these thoughts. And when you recycle negative uh, thoughts consistently, you 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 tumble down. And that, that is what uh, started uh, my roller coaster ride with with uh, mental health. Oh, oh. And uh, yeah, so in two thousand and nine, unfortunately, at the, I. I was checked into a hospital, uh, but I, I broke out of this hospital without having seven nights of sleep. And when you don't sleep, uh, you, 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 you become very mentally unwell. And I was hearing voices, suffer from psychosis. And I went on a bit of a rage, uh, which I'm not very proud of, but I was a very unwell man. And unfortunately, I assaulted two unfortunate uh, victims that were, were, were going to work to provide for their families. Uh, yeah, I, I, as you mentioned, I was tasered, handcuffed, and, and thrown in the jail cell, and then I was put in a psychiatric uh, mental institute for a month, uh, heavily medicated, and trying to get yeah. my get my health and well-being back. Paulie, Paulie, it was, was a good say, times. Paulie, I just <clears> want to say thank you so much for being so vulnerable and open, and we don't need to keep touching on this. Um, I, What I'm so proud of, bro, is your journey back from this, brother. I watched the fight on the weekend with two absolute warriors going to war and refusing to give up, getting up off the deck. That took great courage and commitment. But, but this is this is real life, and, and this is from experiencing real highs to the absolute lows, brother. And the way that you come back from it and now that you've turned those into actually lessons going forward to help people is what I'm so impressed about. So I, I want to touch more on that journey back, what you did how you did it, and, and then, of course, Internal Strength, which is a great website, www.internalstrength.nz, and the thousands of people that you now help with uh, the mental health, uh, the mental strength, and internal strength uh, to be better at what you do and continue each day. Thank you, Monty. And we've all got a story. We've all got a story. It's just uh, how we how we use that. And, yeah, I would not be the man that I am today without going through those, those tough times. So from 2009 to 2015, I was heavily medicated. 
I invested in over forty thousand dollars on medication, doctors, endless counseling sessions, uh, but nothing was unable to to ease my pain. But what I did do, Monty, is firstly I reconnected with the two thousand and fifteen uh, Kiwis team. Sorry, two thousand and five. A uh, Tri-Nations winning team, we had a reunion in Sydney and my good friend, my best mate, Shantane Huppy, come and pick me up from my apartment in Sydney to to get me to this uh, reunion. So that was the first steps to to my wellness, to tell the truth. And uh, every day I set little challenges for myself. Uh, I was not much of a, a speaker, but I went to a public speaking course. I started, started uh, sharing my story and I thought, actually, I'm... I wouldn't mind doing this for a living and, and actually not so much for a living, but I found a new passion and 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 I wanted to go out there and, and help my other fellow uh, people in need and, and for a bit of inspiration. And and now 2000 and 2021, sorry, mate, we've been locked down for how many weeks? I've lost uh, track of dates. <laughs> I was able to create Internal Strength, which is a self-development human potential program that uh, I share the 10... Uh, modules values and tools that keep me healthy and well and uh, yeah i share this program which is a week course throughout new zealand uh, online within the the corporate sector rangatahi and, and professional athletes for which i'm i'm very proud of mate so uh, to do something that you, you you love and you're passionate about and to hopefully make a difference in people's lives it is truly uh, a blessing i'm very grateful for this opportunity it's been a life of impact, brother, off on the field and off the field. But I want to go back to that moment because, you know, your 10 steps to that person you want to be in an internal strength um, was something you learned over time, but you had to go through that. So the first step was obviously Shantane reaching out to you, which was amazing. The little steps, the little goals. Uh, what what did you do in that process that we could all be aware of um, before we even decide to jump on the internal strength course going forward? Because it's, it's a wonderful story, bro. People just don't get the opportunity to come back from that or be in, in a way where they can articulate how they did. Thank you, Monty. Uh, when when people go through serious mental health issues like I did, I can only speak for myself, uh, but I had my guard up, Monty, and when you have your guard up, you, you can't see the actual people that are trying to help you. So I had support. I had family within the league, Fano within my own family. Uh, they were there to help me, but I had my guard up trying to protect myself. Uh, so I had lack of vision. But once I learned to bring my guard down, and, and oh, okay, no, my, my former teammates, uh, they, they do support me. Uh, my family are there for me and it was a step at a time uh, but what I was what what we need to do we need to keep on challenging ourselves because when you challenge yourselves uh, we grow uh, what I did do I during that period of unwellness I was hanging out with 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 negative people mm. and when you become when you hang out with negative people you you, you gain their mentality so what I did was I I uh, let I let that crowd go, the hangers on us, and I started to reconnect with my fellow former teammates, my family, and I educated myself. When uh, you, you need to focus on the solutions more than the problems, Monty, and that's exactly what I did. I, I, I read endless uh, psychology books. So I, I, I graduated in psychology. I did all these courses, but what I did was I implemented it in my everyday life and reconnected to the game of rugby league where I was an educational well-being manager for three years at the Tigers which was awesome to reconnect to the game uh, but also building internal strength along the side so for me as selfish as it may seem I keep continuing to share my program continuing to share my uh, my uh, corridor uh, it keeps me on my toes because when you uh, you've got to speak your truth people can catch you out and when you don't speak your truth uh, it shows so yeah. it actually keeps me in tune too and it makes me look after my my internal strength and well-being, Monty. And it's great when you go and talk to the kids out there and even adults, the, the bigger kids, when they see you as a superhero who's done what you've done in life, be so vulnerable and share uh, with them. I, I mean, that's the grounds where healing can, can take place, right? Definitely healing, yeah. We've all got stories. Uh, when you're vulnerable, we've got to go there. And, and we're going to embrace these fears, these internal fears that we have, where it's speaking up in front of people or asking for help, or or being diligent and 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 taking that to do list every single day. You've you got to really take responsibility of our own lives, uh, or else somebody else will. If you really want to be the captain of your waka, you have to take uh, charge, and it takes certain steps. But we need each other. We all need each other. We're all human. 
humans make mistakes, my bro, but uh, values and principles remain strong through the, the tough times. Yeah, just on your website, www.internalstrength.nz, uh, there's a quote that I quite like. There's a number of quotes, and you've got a lot of quotes that people should be following you on social media as well because you often put them up or you talk to them. We all have a choice in everything we do, and the sooner we realize happiness is in our hands, miracles can happen. Uh, talk me through that, bro. Yeah, it's just in simple terms, just taking taking control of your, your life, Monty, and, and, and really – trying to make the most out of it we've only got one shot uh, tomorrow's not guaranteed my friends uh, who knows what's going to happen and through don't get me wrong we all have our good and bad days but in those bad days we really got to practice being grateful for what we have and i know auckland's going through a difficult time at the moment and it is tough times but we've got to be really grateful for the small things because when you recycle good feelings you're heading in a positive direction and and what i do know is uh, the mind's a powerful mind, it's a muscle, and we've really got to look after our mind, our, our muscle, because if you look after your mind, your mind will look after you. Yeah, and, and I really mean that for people out there. What's your, what's your um, Instagram handle? It, it is uh, poorly underscore fats, but you can just type in Paul Fatuita. And uh, yeah, he's, I just, he's a great guy to follow because um, I when I went for my walk this morning, as I do, which is a big part of my day with my wife, where I sit down and often on those walks, I, um, you know, I have aspirations, I reflect on my day and everything else. Um, I often see that uh, you've just finished your walk, or you've got a quote uh, and, and many quotes. You're, you're a big fan of quotes all, all the way you live. Uh, which often inspires me to go out there and do something, especially to be, uh, you know, to be where you are after what you've gone through. So, in terms of your life and how it is now, which is amazing, bro. Uh, what do you do daily to ensure that it stays amazing? Because this is some of the stuff that could um, help people out there that are going through lockdowns in these hard times. Yeah, it is hard times, and and I, I love I love quotes, and I love reading, I love watching your your stories, I love following people that inspire me. Michael Jordan inspires me. I never met the man yet, but he. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for me, uh, Monty, I, I do have routines, uh, which have now turned them into my uh, ritual everyday uh, to-do lists. Uh, non-negotiables, yeah. Non-negotiables, my friends. Get them with I us, get, so I, I I go to bed about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I, I wake up between five and, and six. So I get up, I don't look at my phone, I put. I don't sleep with my phone next to me. I've been practicing this for five years, Monty. I don't use, look at my phone an hour before I go to bed. The hour before sleep needs to be calm and cool and collective. So I go, if I watch something a bit scary, I, I might have a little nightmare here and there, so, you know, I'm a bit soft in that department. But uh, in the morning, I wake up, I, I don't look at social media at all. I, I go into into our office, I, I, I do my, my karakia, I do, I love to read. I practice 10, 15 minutes on Te Māori, which is important to me. Uh, I read for about 30 minutes, and then I do my to-do list, and then I exercise. And uh, I, I sparred with you a year ago. You're very fit. You know, we went 20 rounds. We, I actually wanted to go 10 rounds, but you pushed me to go 20 rounds. I didn't, I didn't want to, but I couldn't you leave. You did it easy, brother. You did it easy. <laughs> but with exercise, I, I don't need to push myself to that, that high level every single day, as long as I'm moving, Monty. As long as I'm moving, I might me, me and my honey might just go for a walk or I feel like running today, I'll run. I don't have a schedule, but I've got to do something. And what I love about exercise now is I can train when I want, when I want. Whereas as a professional athlete for 15 years, it was you got to be here at seven. You got to do this at 10. You got to follow these instructions. Yep, you go home at five. You got to eat this, you got to eat that. I love the the uh, schedule. So whenever I feel like training, I, I train. I've got a little setup downstairs in the garage and uh, exercise is, is is my anchor. It keeps me it keeps me uh, going, but also making sure I get the appropriate rest uh, is is very important. Also, now I know you're a big man of quotes, brother. So I want to hear uh, some of your favorite quotes uh, and, and why, because uh, it'd be great to uh, get those little snipped up and share that with a lot of people. Okay, me aroha kue ia kue ano, which means love yourself. We have to love ourselves. Because uh, when you, we love ourselves, we can we can forgive ourselves uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, when you love yourself, you're able to to face your fears and put yourself in vulnerable positions, and and it is truly the number one uh, important ingredient to to your existence is to love yourself no matter what. Uh, another one is uh, Kotifano to me a family comes first, 
you don't want to you you don't want to achieve success on your own. You got to have your your loved ones uh, with you uh, during those tough moments to inspire you and to get you through. But also when you when you uh, gain success, you, you want to celebrate your victories with with others. Uh, also, I have plenty more. But I'll, I'll yep. stick to those two. <laughs> no, carry on. I, I, because I, I love the quote here, Kama. I want three more, please, Paulie. Okay. Kote fine to me a tōtahi, which I've already said. Karaki te mato, karaki te maui, which means we must live our life in balance spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Uh, uh, when you work in the well-being space, or when you work as a, as in your job too, Monty, is very demanding. You've got to be on point when the camera's on. Yeah, you really got to have your other balances in your life in check uh, because, you know, when you're working hardcore 24-7, uh, it, it bites you in the bum uh, one way or another, whether it was with your health or or with, with other things. So my health and my well-being is my number one priority. Without my health, I can't be a good father. I can't be a good partner. I can't deliver uh, an awesome program in internal strength. So as selfish as it may seem, my health – is 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 the number one priority in my life, uh, which I take uh, really seriously because of because I haven't, and that's what happened to me ten years ago. I ended up in a psychiatric uh, mental hospital. Yeah. Hey, just just on that, in terms of purpose, you mentioned the family quite a lot. Um, do you purpose why? Um, what's your thoughts in and around it? And do you how often do you revisit it, or how important is it to you as an individual? Because you know, I just take it for granted that it's important to everyone. It may not be that way, so I just wanted to get your feelings on that. So, sorry, Monty, was that on your purpose or your why? I mean, is is it a okay. big part of your life? Does it change often? And and how do you how do you stick to it? Because I mean, it's always huge, and quite often my purpose uh, may change a little. Uh, depending on what happens or if I need a refresh, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, my why is we, we need to keep on – I try to remind myself uh, my, my why and, and why I do what, what I do. And, and my why is, is, is to remain healthy, uh, but understanding that we have our up and, up and down days. Uh, but when you make good choices and decisions consistently, uh, that – will put you back in a, in a better frame of mind. So I go to bed at night sleeping well because you, when you make better choices, you don't do stupid things, <laughs> you sleep better. And, and I need my sleep. But my why is my family. I love my children dearly. My beautiful daughter, Gabrielle, I haven't seen her in, in two years properly. I spent a, a week in, in, in June with, in here in Sydney. So my, my children, uh, my why, I want them to be raised with, with, with love, care, and affection. It's, it's our job. As fathers, my bro, they they didn't choose to be born. Uh, it's we we it was our decisions and our partners. So I, I really hold my children up high, and also the the legacy of my Fana and my past Tupana, uh, the people that have my coaches, my mentors throughout my boxing league, softball, touch all those people that have given me good positive uh, love and and wisdom. Uh, so my why comes very strong, my friend. It's not just me here. It's yeah, it's, it's passed on through generations and people that have cared for me. Uh, you're a top man. Life. You're a top man, brother. Like I said, such impact on the field and definitely off the field. You've you've made me proud for a long period of time. Um, dub dub dot internal strength dot nz. Uh, so people can just find out how to get to you can they do this individually do they do it as groups as well and 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 what's the essence of, of, of what you do uh, the essence of what i do is to empower and inspire people to be the best versions of themselves uh, you can get hold of me on my website you can send me an email i'm on social media instagram and, and facebook if you'd like to send me a message i'll, I'll, I'll try my best to get straight back to you uh, but the program is again it's i share my life story and whatnot but it's, it's shared with with uh, mentors and positive role models that have impacted my life, and that resonates with with a lot of uh, people. So yeah, it's just, it's just not me with internal strength. I have my beautiful partner Trina, and my family, and and I've got uh, some really good uh, senior support there that's keeping in check. So yeah, uh, our mahi is important, and and people are important too. So just trying to do the best that we can do to serve our community, my bro. You are a wonderful man, Paulie Fatawira. Uh, you've done amazing things and you continue to do so. Thank you for your time and for being so vulnerable and sharing your story with us, my bro. Uh, and to everyone out there, thank you for joining in. And remember, there's nothing quite like a real talk. We'll see you soon. Kia ora. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate your time.